Okay, so I've got another story for you today. This one is told to us by the Rambam. And this is a story that's going to, once again, bring out this incredible, powerful idea that the most powerful force at our disposal to improve our personal lives, our relationships with friends, family, and even with the Kaddish Baruch Hu, is the ability, the bravery, to actually experience our own emotions. And let's start this way. You know, people like to make these epic fails compilations, right? So if I would ask you, what was the absolute greatest, most epic fail in human history? Probably, I would nominate, you know, my nomination would have to be Adam Harishan. Comes into Gan Eden, everything is perfect, a perfect world. All he has to do is nothing for a few hours, makes it to Shabbos, boom, paradise forever. Of course, he's got all kinds of reasons why he doesn't do it that way. He eats from the eights, hadas, and here we are thousands of years later suffering. Now, this is not personally good to Adam Rishon Chazal already talk about don't mess with him because we do the same thing every day. So let's not blame him too much. The next runner-up epic fail, number two. Once again, my nomination would be the Jewish people leaving Egypt because that was an awesome moment. I mean, just think about the buildup. Ten plagues. God showing his awesome might. Blood, frogs, lies, crazy stuff. Makas, Bechoros, all Egyptians dead, chasing the Jews into the desert. Oh my gosh, the Yamsuf splitting the sea. Crazy miracles. Wow. Now they're on their way to the promised land. Here we come. And then, at the finish line, they blew it. And Hashem turns to them and he says, guys, you're all going to die. <laughs> That's it. You failed. Your children are going to go in. You failed. You blew it. You're going to die. Now imagine being told by Hashem. Sure, you can live out 40 years, you know, because the way it worked is anyone who was at the age of 20 is chai of Misa is going to get killed. So you can live out your 40 years, you know, till you hit 60, then it's all over. Imagine being told by God himself that you failed. And you could live out your life, but there's really no purpose for your life anymore. All of history is going to remember that you blew it. Kind of depressing, would you say? Here's what happened every year. And the Rambam wants to describe the holiday of what we call Tuba Av, the 15th day of Av. And he says, they chose this day because of a crazy thing that happened to these people in that generation. So here's a little background information before I read the Rambam's words to you. Every year, on Tisha B'Av, they would dig their grave. And the first year, people who are 60 years old, they all died. And their friends, I guess, buried them the next morning. And the same thing happened every year. Tisha B'Av, dig your grave, lie in it, and you don't wake up in the morning. A strange thing happened, though, on year 40, the last year of the Jews' sojourn in the desert. Something different happened. They dug their graves like they do every year. Well, at least they saw other people doing it every year. They lie down in their graves, and they wake up in the morning. Now, I would give a lot of money to watch what that looked like. Because you wake up in the morning, you're like, one second, am I dead? I think I'm supposed to be dead. I mean, every year people are dying now. So what happens next? You start pinching yourself, right? But one second, maybe I'm dreaming, and I'm pinching myself in my dream. Or maybe I'm dead, and I'm pinching myself after I'm dead. Who knows what death looks like? Maybe this is what it looks like. I don't know. Whatever happened. At a certain point, they all looked around, they got together, and they said, this is weird. I guess we made a mistake. And it's not the ninth of Av yet. It must have been the eighth. So guess what? The next day, everyone back in. Get back in those graves. So they all lied back down. Guess what? They woke up again. And they kept doing this until the 15th of the month. Guess what happened on the 15th of the month? It's a full moon. They looked up. They saw the moon. They're like, oh, my gosh. We've been reprieved. We've been forgiven. We're not going to die. And they were filled with such joy. This became a holiday. But that's not the real reason for the holiday. And I want to read the words of the Rambam to you so you get a sense of what really is going on here. This is the Rambam in his Pirush HaMishnai's commentary on the Masechus Tainis, the end of the Masechta. They chose the 15th day of Av for this holiday. Because on that day, the plague stopped. 
in the 40th year. Ki hamavez haisa harbe bechol tespa'av. There was a lot of death going on in every Tisha B'Av. Ubeshana achren in Nistalka, in the last year, it ended, it left. Vehimtinu ad chatzei achredish, but they waited for half of the month, just to make sure this is really going on. Ve'oz, and get these words, ve'oz. Bodchu b'nafsham, they trusted their souls. Ve'heminu ba'atzmam, and they believed in themselves. Why? Ve'hergishu boy rotzoin haboyre, they felt inside their hearts and in their souls the God's desire for them. He is no longer angry at them. And therefore, from that day on, they made it a day of partying. Why? You see, there's a very important question to ask here. Why is the holiday on the 15th? Because if you think about it, it's the wrong day. The real reprieve happened on the 9th of Av. They just didn't realize that because they thought they made a mistake until the 15th. So why was the holiday when they realized the holiday should have been on the actual day that they were forgiven that they didn't die? That's what the Ramah was telling us. You know why they chose the 15th? Because their personal salvation was a private holiday. That wouldn't have been a holiday for all of generations. What they want every generation to know is what happened on the 15th. On that day, they believed in themselves. They felt Hashem's love for them. And they said, oh my gosh, we who committed the worst failure ever and all of our generations are going to suffer because of what we did. If we can feel Hashem's love and we can do teshuva, so can they. And that's the holiday that they wanted for all of time. That even the Meisei Midbar, that generation of the Meisei Midbar, they can do teshuva also. Hashem could forgive them, Hashem could love them, and they could believe in their own ability to do teshuva. That's a salvation. They knew that that's what's going to help us for all generations. So Tuba'av, the holiday of Tuba'av, is that no matter how far we've gone, we can feel Hashem's love for us, and we could always come back. And that's why, as we start to think about the Beis Hamidosh being destroyed, and how far we are from even caring about that, we're saying, how can I do teshuva? I am so far away. Just allow yourself to feel that. And the next step, you will start to feel the hope in your own neshama and do tshuva to HaKadosh Baruch Hu. So join us in the spiritual you, Teshuva Chabura. Send your email to thetorahcenter at gmail.com as we train ourselves to escape all of the guilt and shame from our minds so we can access the power of hope that's coming from our neshama, from our soul, and return to HaKadosh Baruch Hu.